So we're going to talk about self-love today. Such a great topic. Right away, I'm so curious if you're listening right now or watching, do you feel like you can look at yourself in the mirror and sincerely say, I love myself? Mm. Do you feel like you can take yourself out on a solo date, like a solo dinner, enjoy and, and like enjoy alone time with yourself? Yeah. You know, I think for a lot of us, we don't feel that. So today we're going to talk about self-love, how to build more self-love so you feel good just being with yourself every day. Yeah. And we're going to start off talking a little bit right now about like why a lot of us don't have that. Like what is going on where most of us don't have that? Yeah, I say the biggest three reasons why we don't feel self-love as a society, as a lot of people can relate to, I would say the biggest one and the other two kind of dovetail from the first one is because we're caring too much about what other people think, mm -hmm. right? Right from when we're a young age, we're conditioned to believe that our sense of love and our sense of safety comes from the opinions of our guardians. So if mom and dad approve of us, give us love when we're a good boy or a good girl, we are training ourselves, we are conditioning ourselves right from that young age to believe that that's where love comes from outside of ourselves. And it makes so much sense because when we are infants, we literally do need their love and acceptance to take care of us. But it's hard at some point to kind of break that a little bit as you get older and not just continue to feel like not only your parents, but now the opinions and beliefs of everyone else outside of yourself. That's right. Is what makes you a lovable human. Yeah. And so the the biggest thing is that we're constantly measuring our self-worth based on what we think other people think of us, whether that's how many likes or comments do we get on our social media post or when we're out to dinner and someone gives us a dirty look, mm -hmm. we unconsciously project that that means something something about us mm -hmm. that we're unlovable. We get that feeling inside our solar plexus or our heart or our throat that feels like resistance inside our bodies. And we all have these habits where we're trying to get that sense of, of love and approval through external validation or what we think other people think of us. Yeah. So instead of learning to build it internally within ourselves and having that be the most important thing, majority of us are looking for that outside of ourselves from other people. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the biggest things that we want to talk about today, one of the biggest intentions that we have for everyone watching this is to stop it, <laughs> is, to, <laughs> is to start practicing not giving a rip what other people think of us. And yeah. it's something that I think takes practice, right? Yes. It's not something that you can just click off unless you're at a point where you've been such a people pleaser your whole life. And by the way, last week's episode, if you haven't watched it, this is kind of a dovetail episode from that. Learning how to stop people pleasing. The essence of it is building that sense of self love so that you don't have to constantly look for it outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. So yeah. go ahead and watch that video first if you haven't watched it. Yeah. And like we said in that last video, a lot of it too, when it comes to not, like you said, it's exercising this muscle of not caring about what other people think as much. We talked about about a little last week about how those thoughts are still likely to come up. You're probably still going to have some concern or fear around other people's thoughts. I think for me anyways, the difference is you just don't put weight on it. Totally. And it's a practice. So that's the biggest thing. We need to stop caring what people think about. The second biggest thing that we want to talk about, about the reason why aren't we feeling self-love it comes from how are we measuring ourselves from like an egoic perspective, you know, our status, what we have, the amount of money, the kind of house we live in, the kind of car we drive. People are so unconsciously obsessing and, and thinking that if I'm perceived as high status, that I am more lovable. Mm -hmm. If I again, if I get a lot of likes or if I'm famous then I will be lovable. But the problem with that is, of course, is that it feels nice when people are loving on us, but that's conditional. And as soon as someone stops loving us or someone hates us or criticizes us or our work, then that's a trigger for us to feel unlovable. Yeah. And what kind of comes to my mind is this societal programming that we've all been fed around how feeling good is based on getting things outside of us whether that's a relationship, a job, success, validation and love from other people, the ultimate home. It's like all these things outside of us. And I don't know if you've had that experience where you've gotten all those things outside of you and you're like, oh, I still feel kind of shitty. And it's because we haven't learned to build that 
<laughs> that inner state of being able to love ourselves, feel happy within. That's right. And it is really unfortunate that society doesn't really teach us that from a young age because the majority of us, I think, do spend the majority of our lives then chasing these external things, spending so much time and energy and resources on them. And it's not until later in life where you realize like, oh, that shit doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Really at the end of the day, it's how I feel inside. And it's like that old quote where they say, you know, wherever you go, there you are. That's right. And it, so it doesn't matter, mm. you know, the external things that change and shift in your life if you're still feeling shitty and not loving yourself on the right. inside. I love it what Jim Carrey says. I wish everybody could achieve their highest dreams yeah. so that they could discover that that is not the answer to happiness so or, true. or self-love. Yeah. It's so true. I remember when I was in my girl band. Remember I was in my girl group? Queen. Um, I feel like I had an experience. Sorry, I was channeling my inner queen. Yes, you were. Don't come at me, bro. You look like a queen today. Oh, thanks. You're, look, you're looking great. Little gray. red lip. Yeah. Thanks, child. Good job. Um, oh, yeah, but I feel like I had a direct experience of that because that was like, for me, that external thing in the world that was like on my bucket list. I had this vision of myself being in a band and being on stage. And I literally had thoughts of like, if I don't achieve this thing and experience it before I die, I will hate myself. Yeah. Like wow. it was such an extreme need to be that and do that. And I had the experience of doing it. We went to LA, we recorded music, we opened for Akon. We had like a number of like just really cool experiences. Yeah. And I honestly didn't really enjoy it that much. Right. And you felt empty afterwards. Not <sighs> empty perhaps, but you thought it was going to fill you up on yes. a level. I thought it was going to be this like big fun. I would feel incredible. It was like my ultimate dream coming to, to fruition. Mm. And the whole time I was just stressing and a perfectionist. And right. because that has been my personal theme of how I've showed up and things I've struggled with in my life. So yeah, it just goes to show that a lot of the things like externally, whatever it may be for you, that you think is going to make you so happy. It's like if you haven't learned to work on that stuff inside, whether it's the self-love, perfection, whatever it may be, it's probably not going to be all that enjoyable. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And the third one that we want to talk about too, how do we get our love is obviously our relationships. Throughout my whole life, my unconscious wound has been I won't feel love unless a woman loves me too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Obviously not the full part of me, but that's been my wounding. And so how many people out there can relate to the feeling that they don't feel a sense of completion until they found their partner. Well, freaking Disney screwed all of us up. Like, what are all the Disney movies about? Like, you're not happy, you're not complete until your Prince Charming comes. And it's ruined it for men too. Men feel yeah. like they constantly have to show up and slay a dragon in right. order to impress a woman. Be the white knight. Yeah, and so yeah. men are constantly trying to... Save, Yeah. be the hero. Yeah, so it's definitely ruined it for both yeah. sides. It's so true. And then relationships are obviously just so much more enjoyable when you don't need someone to complete you, but you've learned to complete yourself on your own. And then you're choosing a partner from a place of like, oh, that person just seems awesome and fun. I don't need them, but they're just so amazing that I want them in my life and they add to your life. That's right. And the ironic thing is, is that when we stop being needy of this external validation, so the true. real connection, the high connection that we actually really want, that ends up coming anyway. Yeah. And it's like you said, it's just a cherry on top of your already delicious Sunday. <laughs> so, so tell us more about how you have come from a place of a lack of self-love to a place now. And like, if I'm being real, yeah. I experience you as someone who is very self-loving and who has come a long way from that yeah. egoic faux love yeah. to where you are now, where it feels totally. like it's coming from a deeper, authentic, genuine, connected part of self. Yes. I feel like I can really speak to this. It's really cool. I feel myself just feeling excited because this is a journey I feel like I've truly, really walked. And I think for me, when I was younger, I felt very invisible in the world, very shy. And part of why I think I got into radio was because of that wounding of wanting to be seen, wanting to be heard. And it felt really good for a long period of my life to get that external validation. I'm grateful for, you know, the last 20 years or so of doing more of the internal work because like I said, I've, I've had direct experiences of achieving the things that you thought were going to bring you the good feelings. And at the end of the day, still feeling crappy inside. Yes. 
So I feel like the things that have helped me the most, and I'll share them with you guys in hopes that it has the same impact. First of all, just looking at your beliefs about yourself. Mm. I feel like so often when it comes to feeling good about yourself, a lot of us just have these really shitty thoughts about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so like, first of all, looking at where did these thoughts come from? Mm -hmm. Was it something one of your parents said growing up, a friend, a partner, and now it's been ingrained in your own belief system and you've carried that forward. Mm -hmm. So dismantling that, Mm -hmm. looking at it, being like, is this even in reality? Is this true? Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of this is we've thought these thoughts our entire lives. And so it's consciously stopping the pattern and choosing new thoughts, happier thoughts. And over a period of time, we keep doing that and our thoughts do start to shift and mm-hmm. they start to become the normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's a big thing. Yeah. I call those shame triggers, right? When those mm-hmm. feelings of sh- or shame narratives, when they pop up, feel into them, lean into them, ask yourself, why do I feel shame or guilt? Where in my body is that showing up? Mm-hmm. And what is my earliest memory associated with that? It's a part of you, a part of your nervous system that's still caught in a place of not feeling loved or not feeling safe. And it's our responsibility today to reparent that part of ourselves, yeah. to give it the love, connection, safety, worthiness, validation that it was looking for at the time of wounding. Yeah. I love that you brought up the self parenting component because that is a theme within a lot of this stuff that I was going to start talking about is to start because I think a lot of us, as we get older, we're like, if you lose your self care, it's hard to want to do things to take care of yourself if you just don't have a lot of self-care. So it's like, can you start to maybe look at yourself, like connect, remember back when you were a child, Mm. think back to that version of yourself and like, how would you take care of them? How would you speak to them? And that goes into this next part that I would suggest is focusing on your self-care and it's like little things maybe like Mm. making your bed every day Mm. getting adequate sleep Mm. eating food that feels nourishing like just like doing acts having nice bubble baths at night Mm. doing acts that feel like you're nourishing yourself absolutely massive yeah Yeah, just those little things add up so much just really caring for yourself as you would care for someone else that you love. You fucking deserve it. You deserve to show up for yourself. You deserve to give yourself that beauty. And I think what comes up for a lot of people is they feel like that they're being selfish, Mm. right? That's such a big narrative throughout our lives that we can't be selfish. We should always be taking care of other people, our children, our families, whoever at work, our society, whatever. We put everybody else before ourselves And as soon as that act of self-care comes up, we think that we're being selfish. Mm. And the narrative that we have to remember is that you can't pour from an empty cup. Yeah. And it's only when you fill yourself up, do you have anything to give anybody anyway? Absolutely. And I just think of like, if you're not taking care of yourself, the way that manifests over time, like for me, I think of probably because I had health issues as a child, I'm Mm. always thinking through that lens. Like if you're not taking care of yourself at some point, is your body going to start to experience either mental or physical issues that are going to have to be addressed? And then you're going to have to be selfish and take care of yourself. That's right. So it's like, can we, do some more like maintenance every day or once a week, even self-care so that we're just taking care of our, our vessels, our, our bodies yeah. so that we're not going to go into those like dire situations where it's like a SOS 911 type of emergency. One of my favorite questions to ask people when they are feeling this way is what do you feel like you need? Just straight up. Yeah. What do you need? Or another great question, what is your soul craving? really Mm, lean into that that's a great question such a juicy question what is your soul craving okay so that self-care just the act of actually taking care of yourself the next thing would be to start focusing on the things in life that you love and that you're passionate about you know i don't think we were meant to just like get up every day go to work come home, make dinner, go to sleep, repeat. Like when you think of spending time with yourself, does that feel exciting and uplifting? Mm. So what are the things, start paying attention to when are the moments in life where you like light up or brighten up? And maybe it's, you know, looking back to when you were a child, what 
what were the things growing up that you've loved to do more than anything? Mm -hmm. And I feel like often we ask people that and not everyone can answer that. Mm -hmm. A lot of, a lot of us are disconnected from the things that bring us joy and passion. So if that is you, then start experimenting, going out there and, you know, trying, taking different classes, like go outside of your comfort zone a little Mm -hmm. bit and experience some new things like you never know what might light you up totally yeah Yeah. and so it's like about building a life that actually feels enjoyable so that you authentically to you unique you yeah and i think so many of us we grew up with our families or our friends being into certain things and or maybe we think we should be into certain things but it's like no like what actually do you enjoy doing yeah what do you fucking love to do yeah and do more of that it's obviously lovely to have friends family loved ones around you to connect with people but what are the things that you have for just you mm. that you can do with yourself mm that you really enjoy doing Mm. like fuck i love that i'm it's like one of the best things that you can build within yourself so that you're not reliant on anything or anyone outside of yourself totally you can totally just have a damn good time with yourself absolutely yeah yeah and then the last final thing that i would suggest is showing up for yourself And so like a lot of these things that we want to do, whether it's like going out, trying these new hobbies, or maybe it's a a career thing that you're wanting to step into, but you're, you're nervous because you don't know how to do it. You tell yourself that you're not good at it. It's showing up and doing it anyway. It's doing the hard thing because when we do the hard thing, we tell ourselves, oh, I got, I got myself. I can trust that I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And we start to have this relationship with ourselves where it's like, we don't need the savior. We don't need someone else to, to hold us, to do it for us. We know that we can count on ourselves. And that really builds your self worth, your self esteem Mm -hmm. to, and it's scary to like get out of your comfort zone and take steps into these new unknown things that you feel called to want to do, but just little baby steps, like just take yes. what you know, if, like I said, if it's like a goal that you have, what's one little tiny step you can do just this week. Yes. And just by doing that slowly over time, you're going to start creating and building more in your life of the things that you actually want for yourself. So yes. many of us, I think, push it away and resist it because we are are scared of failure. We're afraid of the unknown, but then you end up living a life that just feels boring and unfulfilling. So I know it's hard. Take a baby step. Just do it. Looking at you right now, you can do it. Yeah. You have a belief that you can't, or it's going to be hard, or you're scared because of failure or X, Y, Z. But the fucking truth is you can do it. Yeah. And I love what you said, baby steps. Because yeah. a lot of people think that they have to make these huge declarations, these big changes, and you don't. No. Baby steps towards the thing that sets your heart on fire, baby. Yeah. That's what we need. Yeah. And then, it, like I said, it just creates this belief of, okay, I want something in my life that'll make me happy. Well, I, I'm going to get it. I'm oh, going to yeah. do it. Hell yeah. Because you're proving to yourself that you show up for yourself. Let's get that bread. Oh, I want some sourdough. Yes. Balsamic and oil. <laughs> I just want to say to anybody out there who's just like feeling ugh about life, like you can have a fucking awesome life. Yes, you can. Start asking yourself what that life would look like and you can start to build it. Like I really, truly believe in that for all anyone that is listening right now. 100%. Yeah. You absolutely can. You, we are not stuck. We don't have to be stuck in the situations that we're in. Yes. Maybe sometimes periodically, sometimes we do have to make big changes that are really uncomfortable and hard, but I believe that there is a lot more joy and a more fulfilling life available for you out there. 100%. Yeah. And on that, I feel like one big thing that has helped me so much is really realizing where does love really come from? Like, what is love? Mm. You know, and when I think about love, I think love as a energy. I think of love as the essence of who we are Mm. underneath all of these egoic beliefs, these patterns of resistance that we've been carrying throughout our lives, whether that's rooted in a limiting belief or a place of unresolved trauma These are holding us back 
from letting go and opening up our hearts and our mm -hmm. total selves to the only energy that truly exists, which is pure positive energy, pure unconditional love. And it's the essence. It makes me emotional because it's yeah. so beautiful when you really realize and give yourself permission to open up to that you know, some people call it God. Some people call it universal intelligence, higher self. It doesn't matter what you call it. There is a higher power that pervades every single particle of this universe. Mm. And we are a part of it. And that's where love, that's what love is. And you are love. So when we talk about how do you connect with self-love, it's kind of a misnomer because you can't get anything that you already are. Mm -hmm. So it's less about trying to get self-love and it's about letting go of the things that aren't in alignment with your sense of self-love. And another way of saying that is the expression of your authentic self, the expression of who you really are. Yeah, I love that so much. It makes me think of how we are all brought into this world as children, as babies, as pure, innocent love. Mm -hmm. And it's all about, I think, as we get older, learning to shed all this shit that has come our way that has taken us from that state and being connected to just that pure love yes yeah i just really want to reach through the camera right now because i know that there's people that are hearing this that are on the edge on the brink of letting go of any kind of resistant pattern, any kind of egoic identity that's not the real you. And to realize what, that when you have the courage to start letting that go, you can step into your power. You can step into your authentic self, your sense of self-love, and nothing needs to change externally in order for you to experience that right now. Yeah. So start letting go of everything that's not you stop yeah. giving a rip about what anyone thinks about what you really want to do or who you really are in your life because i promise when you do let that go you're free baby yeah you're free there's no one that can hold you back from being you except you yeah next week we have a beautiful beautiful tool that we created that's going to help you practice this sense of self-love that you can listen to every single day and it's really about building the muscle building the habit of connecting with love that authentic expression of who you are yeah i'm excited for that yeah are you do you see this, this? fly yes, <laughs> there's a freaking fly I don't care. you want some love baby i'll give it to you ah, <laughs> get out of here okay beat it beat it beat it <laughs> Okay. So what's the hot offer today? Yeah, I think the hot offer this week would be to just think of this conversation that we just had. There are a number of different components and which one resonates the most for you? Mm. Where are you at right now when you close your eyes, take a deep breath and ask yourself, like, what is standing in the way of you loving yourself more? Or what would showing up for yourself more lovingly look like? Mm. Is it more like making nourishing, delicious meals for yourself? Is it getting to bed earlier? Is it looking at, do I have some stories where I don't feel worthy of love? Are these real? Where did these come from? Mm -hmm. Is it breaking up with the person that you no longer feel like you're in alignment with? Is it creating that business? Is it moving to a different place that you really want to be living in? Is it going and traveling to that place that you really want to travel to? What does the expression of self-love look like to you right now? Start small and work towards going bigger. Start crossing things off your list that you really want to crush in this lifetime, baby. You can do it. Yeah, I'd love to know in the comments, what is the one thing that you're going to focus on this week to bring more self-love into your life? Yeah. We want to hear you in the comments. Yeah. 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 I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys. Like, I, I don't know who you are watching right now. Maybe we have met, but just it's the best freaking thing yes. to build. The yes. It's cliche, they say, but the best relationship that you can build is the one with yourself. And it is so true. Yeah. <laughs> it is Absolutely. so, so true. It's everything. It's the only place that you can get consistent self-love anyway. So you might as well make it a priority. Right? Like, wouldn't it be nice to just feel every day like pretty happy and it's not 
based on the things going on outside of you. It's not based on relationships, jobs, but like you just have a consistent feeling of contentment because you've built that within yourself. Mm -hmm. That is possible. That that can be a reality. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. We love you so much. And I can't wait to see you in the comments and hear about your journey. Let's connect. All our love. Bye.